Hi everyone, it's Denise here from the University of Sewing. We're doing our next block for the Granny's 1930 Sampler. For those of you that maybe don't know, this is the book that we're using by Ricky Timms. This is a very traditional sampler. It's got 42 eight inch finished blocks. This time we'll be talking about block number seven, which is um, Storm at Sea, but I thought we'd go ahead and review some of the ones that we've already done. So let's take a peek at what we've already accomplished since we've actually finished our first row. We're making progress, guys. We've got the very first block we did, which was um, Doves in the Window, which was a new one to me. It was one that I had not seen or played with before. It was kind of cool. I love the little tiny half square triangles here. Adds a nice detail. Block number two was a very traditional Dresden plate. We made it very scrappy and put a whole bunch of different fabrics in there with a nice quiet background so that you really focus on those fabrics. The third block was our first paper pieced block, which really was a lot of fun. And this is the Mariner's Compass. Again, a very traditional block that I'm sure you've seen lots of times and lots of variations. The, uh, the fabric placement, the color choices of the lights and the darks really make that particular block pop. The next one we have is another super traditional Jacob's Ladder. I'm guessing you've probably made one or two of those in your time as uh, quilters. And if you haven't, get ready guys, because at some point you will come across it, I promise. Um, the third one, actually the third one, the fifth one is the Old Maid's Puzzle or the Schoolgirl Puzzle, which I don't know, it just sounds like a better title to me. And then our sixth block, again, is super traditional. Just a nice two-tone churn dash. Again, one of those blocks, if you haven't had a chance to play with that, I'm sure that you will come across it at some point in your quilting adventures. So again, this is the book that we're using. And today we're gonna go with block number seven, which is our Storm at Sea. Let me show you what we've got. I'll give you a rundown on some tips and some pointers. This is a paper pieced block. So if you haven't done that before, this is a great one to practice on. Um, as always, I do suggest that you do a test block. It's just a good idea to see how your fabrics are playing, how the pattern plays out, if it's making sense for your brain. Sometimes things feel a little backwards until you do it. So also as a reminder, this is the book, The Lizzie Albright in the Attic Window. It's a really sweet little novel that the sampler pattern is based off of. This is a great book for... I don't know, I, I would say at least maybe seven or eight and up, something you guys could certainly read together. I've got some tools here laid out today, some things that I'm using that I think you all will find really helpful. We've got a nice little seam roller, especially with the paper piecing, it really does come in handy. It's not a, not a must have, but one of those things that if you have it, you will be glad you did. I've also using a, uh, a rotating cutting mat comes in really handy. Actually, we've used that with lots of our blocks. Of course, my rotary cutter. We've got some rotary blades here, and I would not recommend using a new blade when you're doing foundation piecing because cutting on the paper is going to dull that blade extra fast. So pull out one of your old ones and just have the new one handy and remind yourself to put that new one in afterwards. We've got our foundation paper. The nice thing about the foundation paper when you're printing the pattern on it, after you've got your block done and you're tearing that paper off, it's a little thinner than copy paper, so it comes off much more easily and you're less likely to pull out those stitches. One thing that I do think is really handy and I really would encourage you to consider getting is this add a quarter ruler. Again, it's not a must, but I'll show you when I use it and I think you will find it as handy as I do. It's one of my favorites. So our test block that we did is this little guy. We've got a four unit block here. This is one, two of these, and then the smaller, I think this one's called an economy square, or maybe that was this one, but the same idea basically. And then I'll flip over and show you the back. We've got those seams pressed open, especially during paper piecing. There's a lot of bulk in there. So I know that we typically press to the dark side, which is great. 
but this is one of those I would say consider pressing open. The pattern does not give you pressing directions. It simply says to press well. So however you define that, go for it. I would also like to show you something I did here to keep my brain a little more organized. There were, there's only four fabrics, but I found it easy to get them mixed up as I was cutting them and placing them and I wanted to see what I could do to help myself along the way. So back here, I just marked them. So this was white. I knew that these triangles were all gonna be white. I knew that this center square would be pink because I marked it. And then of course the blue here. It's no fun to rip things out when you put the wrong color in the wrong spot. And this certainly did save me a step or two doing that. So just a thought, just a tip, something that might help. So let's get on to our block. I've got it partially done. I've got the smaller square here already attached to one of the longer diamonds. This diamond is going to get attached here. But before we do that, we've got to finish this guy. So just to review of some paper piecing techniques, I'll flip over here and my copy is not a great copy, but I think you can see the lines here. And what I did before I even made the first stitch was to just crease it. So I'd flip it over and fold it on that line and just give it a good crease with my fingers. And that makes it so much easier to find. You can probably see that fold here. That gives me a great eyeball from where I need to put my, my piece, my block here. So it's gonna go, I have to get this right in my head. Here's the line, the edge of my fabric. I'm gonna line it up there and then just pull it over that line about a quarter of an inch. You can eyeball it, it doesn't have to be super precise. If I wanna make sure that my block, my piece is going to fit, I can flip it over and I can see where this outline is and kind of eyeball. Oh yeah, there's plenty of room there. Another thing I did on this particular block was I did cut the pieces a little bigger because I felt like it gave me a little more wiggle room to make sure that my fabric pieces were in the right spot and I wouldn't lose any of the corners because sometimes that happens. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and attach this one. Now remember for paper piecing, your brain works backwards. Your fabric is on the back of the paper, but you're gonna sew on the front. So holding that in place, I'm gonna lay this down, pull my threads over here, and just peek here to make sure. I've got my thread, I'm gonna lower my presser foot, and I'm gonna start a little past that line, I think you can see. And really, the most important step to this part is to take note of the stitch length. Typically we stitch between around a two, two and a half. For paper piecing, you wanna drop that down to a 1.5, depending on your machine. This is gonna secure those fabrics, those patches, nice and snug. It's also gonna perforate your paper so that when you tear it off, it comes off nicely. But with those pieces being snug, you're not gonna tear those stitches out, which would be incredibly frustrating after you've done all that work. So let's get this one done. And we're just gonna sew right on that line. And we're gonna go all the way to the end of it and just pass just a little. No need to backstitch. We're gonna cut those threads and flip it over and see how it looks. Alrighty, now it looks a little wonky here but because I've cut my pieces a little large, it's probably okay. Here's my, where we're aiming. I'm gonna fold this back with my finger and just give that a little press there. And I think we're in good shape. So we can go over to our rotary cutter, our mat. And I'm gonna use my seam roller. And give that a good pressing there just helps to hold things in place. You can get an idea of how we're doing. Now you could go ahead and start doing the next piece, which would be over here, but I'm gonna take it over to the iron and give this a good press just to make sure these fabrics will behave the way I want them to. The paper certainly helps, holds things in place, nice and snug, it's a great stabilizer. And we're just gonna give this 
a little press here. My iron needs to wake up just a little bit. And you can go ahead and press on the paper. That is absolutely not going to hurt anything. It also sets those seams which we like to do. It makes those threads just hold hold their hands a little tighter, a little more snugly. Now my iron is awake. All righty. Now let's go back over. We do need to trim off some of this. It's a little excess there. And this is where that add a quarter ruler really comes in handy. You can do this with any ruler. But this one, we're going to flip this back, fold it on that line, and because we sewed past the edge, we do have to tear that just a little bit so that we can get to that stitch line. So the paper's out of the way. We've just got that extra fabric laying out there. I'm going to flip it over this way. Now this add a quarter ruler, let me see if I can get you a good visual of this. You see it's got a little lip on it from here to the edge of the lip here is your quarter inch, but that lip serves to hang on to that fabric at the seam, and it makes it nice and snug. If you press down just a little bit and then push the ruler up against that seam line, this seam line that we just did, it will hold it in place. Let's get it to line up there, and then we just need our rotary cutter. And I did put a new blade in this one. Actually, not this one. This is the paper one. So we might have to fight a little bit with that one today. But there we go. Ta-da! Most of the block done. So we're going to go ahead and finish. The other sides, the other corners. We're going to do opposite corners. This is number four and this is number four. And then we'll get those pressed and trimmed and then we're going to go ahead and do number five and number five. So let's get those knocked out. Let's flip our fabric, flip our paper back to crease that seam. And the same idea There's our seam line that we're aiming for. And we'll put this on here. You can kind of eyeball the corner of this piece with the corner here, just to make sure that you're pretty centered. And let's get this one attached. Now this one, You'll see that this line comes out to the seam allowance. I'm actually going to start past the seam allowance and go all the way off. And the goal in doing that is again to add a little more stability to our block. We've got that same 1.5 stitch length going. this guy back just to make sure he's out of the way before we go ahead and attach the other one. And then we'll trim and press both of them. Again, working with these triangles, be really careful that you're not tugging on those biased edges. It does want to wiggle out of shape if we do that. The foundation paper really does help with that though. So again, we've got it lined up with our point aiming here, and we're gonna just eyeball about a quarter inch over that fold crease that we just made and stitch this one. And we'll back off of that seam allowance and just go all the way down. Overthink this while you're paper piecing, you'll go bananas. Don't overthink it. Just sew on the line, flip it over, sew on the line. Once you get the hang of it, once you do a couple of them, it, it almost makes sense. 
but it's so easy and so fun. And it makes such accurate blocks, accurate points. All right, let's trim these. Again, we're gonna fold back the paper. Have to help it along a little bit here. And we're folding just to that seam and it'll naturally wanna fold right where you've stitched. And we'll bring our ruler over. We do have a couple of these rulers in stock. And if you are interested, all of the supplies that we're using today are on our website, theuniversityofsewing.com. We'd love to have you come visit us in the shop, but maybe you're a little far for that, or maybe you're just not feeling like going out today. And shopping online is the way to go. I'm happy to help you with that too. Well, that one doesn't want to leave. You are not invited, little friend. There we go. Go back, guys, over there. Let's trim this one. Pull that back just a hair. And really, when you're pulling that back, those couple stitches, you can feel how easily it's gonna, the paper's gonna come off when the time comes. The pattern does suggest at the very end that you take the paper off. I have chosen to leave the paper on until we actually put all the blocks together. I just like that little extra bit of security and insurance. I guess I didn't eat my Wheaties this morning, guys. There we go. And do those other two corners. Same thing. This is the only way I have ever seen this particular block done. I'm sure that you could do it in a more traditional method. It is actually in the book it mentions it's one of the few blocks that really is known by just the one name. And I think they traced it back to um, a ladies' magazine around 1895. Definitely an oldie but a goodie. Almost done, guys. Got one more corner. It's looking pretty good. I love those colors. Bright and cheery. Give this a little press with our seam roller just to keep it out of the way till we can get it to the iron. I'm curious of the, uh, the blocks that we've done so far. I'm curious if you have any favorites. I'd love to know. Any that were new to you that Maybe now you have a new favorite. I will tell you that the next several blocks, we've got lots of paper piecing coming up. So lots of practice for that. Lots of different types of blocks to use for paper piecing. The next block, number eight, is not paper pieced. I would give you a warning about that one in case you haven't peeked that far ahead. The block that we will do next time is the postage stamp block. Now these blocks finish at only eight inches so they're not super big. The postage stamp block that we'll be doing has 64 one inch finished squares. So my suggestion is that you start picking your fabrics now and start cutting those squares now because it's going to take a little while. But I think they're going to be super pretty. Now I pulled that one. There we go. And this one, I gave it a very generous quarter inch seam, but that's okay. 
So I'm lining that up it's nice and snug against that seam line. And there is a lot of bulk in here, so you do have to press a little bit. And of course, using your, your paper rotary blade, it's not going to be as sharp as your fabric one. And again, that's why I use the paper one. Flip this guy over. A little press here. Let's take this to the iron. We'll press it nice and flat. And then we'll give it one more trim before we attach our pieces together. All right, Iron, are you awake yet? Let's do paper side first. Set those seams. I think that should be on a t-shirt. Set those seams. And then we'll do this side. And of course, this is where I want to slide my iron around, but that's a bad idea. So I will resist the urge. I can hear my mom's voice. Press, Denise, don't iron, press. All right, let's go trim it. to stand up to do this trimming because I feel like we'll have more success with a little extra muscle behind it. And I'm going to get my regular rotary cutting ruler and I'm trimming to this outside line here. That'll be our seam allowance. We'll get that lined up nicely there. thing all the way around all four sides A little muscle makes all the difference there we go we're so close That there's a, uh, a bunch of quilting friends, non-quilting friends that have joined us in this sort of marathon quilt sampler that we're working on. I'm super glad about that. Hope you guys will um, make a little note on our video. Share it with your friends. Make sure that you subscribe. That helps us out. Helps us to know what, uh, what you guys are really enjoying too. Alrighty, so there it is. And our block goes like this. So we're going to sew them together in rows. We've got this one done. Let's go ahead and attach this one. I will say trying to get these little guys to line up is a little tricky. My suggestion is the first time you do it, I would loosen that stitch up maybe even a generous stitch. Make sure you like where it comes out and then you can go back over it with a more snug stitch. We are going to adjust from our 1.5 stitch length to something a little bigger because that's a lot of bulk to go through. So let's see. The goal here is to get this point, this little corner here, to line up here. Let's see if we can eyeball that. And if this seam line lines up with the other one, let's turn this around. Then we can kind of peek. This is a great place to use your wonder clips. If you pin, you might want to consider that. I will say for these big pieces, I did pin them to the paper just so that they wouldn't wiggle on me. I'm going to take one more peek and then we're going to go for it. Let's see what we can do. 
cross your fingers. I'm going to lower that needle. And then I'm going to change the stitch length. Let's go up to at least a two. Let's go two and a quarter. Peeking under here one more time. It's a little bulky at that intersection. All right, let's see how we did. Do we love it? Dun, 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 dun. Well, that's pretty darn close, I think. I don't know about you, but I will take that. So we're gonna take this over to the iron. We're going to press the seams open and then we can attach it to the top half of the block and call it a day. Pressing the seams open will help us to line it up with that other block also. I'm gonna to press to the side first. I'm gonna press here just to make sure it's nice and flat. Let's get these guys open. This is a good place to use those little um, silicone thimbles for pressing because it does get quite warm. If you've got little friends that are sewing with you, this probably wouldn't be the spot to let them press, but maybe it is. Depends on how little your friends are. I think sewing and quilting is a great way to connect with those younger people, whether they're your children, grandchildren, neighbors' children, random children on the street that you've convinced to come sew with you. All right, almost done. So this half I have already pressed open. Let's get it lined up here. And that's gonna go a long way in making sure that our pieces are nice and square. You can see that seam is gonna line up right there. And this is definitely a place to use your wonder clips, your pins, whatever you're using to hold things together. That looks pretty good there, maybe over a hair. And let's see how we're doing on this corner. I think that needs to come down just a little bit. When you're using your wonder clips, of course, if you clip up here, then you'll have to take them off just like you would for pins. But if you clip them here or here, it still helps to hold it nice and square, but then they're not in the way. Let's see how this one comes out. Some of you are perfectionists and if those points don't line up exactly right you will be removing things and redoing them and whatever makes you happy go for it i subscribe to the drive-by theory of quilting if somebody drives by my quilt and says oh look how cute that is that works for me i'm happy but i know that doesn't work for everybody What is it they say? The moment of truth. Well, guys, I think I'm going to take that one and call it a win. What do you think? It just needs a press. So let's give it one last press. And then we've got block number seven in the book.
And again, we'll press to the side just to get things to sort of cooperate a little bit. Press this side one more time. You could also use your Taylor's clapper here to help. That's one of my new favorite notions. And then we can come back and open this seam up. That's my iron beeping. It's singing, guys. Sounds like a truck backing up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And we'll just let it hang out there for a second. Give it a little press here. One more here. And one more on the side. And I think we can call that a success. What do you think, guys? Storm at sea. I don't know. It's got a lot of movement. You know, waves go all kinds of different directions, but I think just the colors in it, it's kind of happy. Doesn't make me think stormy thoughts. So block number seven is complete. I'm so glad you guys are joining us on this adventure. We've got many more to do. Next time we'll do block number eight, which again is that postage stamp block. It has 64 one inch finished squares in it. So I would start digging through your stash now to find those fabrics you want. You might want to start cutting because it's going to take a little while, but I promise we'll have a good time either way. So thanks again for joining us, everyone. This is Denise from the University of Sewing. Be sure you check out our website at theuniversityofsewing.com. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our video if you found something useful. See you next time.